likes to have fun. And she likes to make people laugh. She likes to talk in silly voices. She's always making jokes and pranks. She can satisfy herself in terms of making her day as enjoyable as she wants to. And that's, that's Emily. She is, to me, your prototypical middle child who has her own mind of her own. And you kind of have to rein her in sometimes. But just let her be the freewheeling kid she is. Last year on New Year's Eve, we were watching the ball drop and Emmeline had ear pain and she was just like, I, I can't watch it. She was screaming, laying on the couch and we were like, oh my goodness, I think she has an ear infection. So for the next six weeks, we went to all different doctors, checked her for ear infection. That's really what it felt like because she kept pushing on her ear and got tubes in her ears and that didn't work. And then it moved towards stinging in her cheek and then numbness of her face. And that's when we finally went to the emergency room and they did a scan and they found a tumor. So her tumor is on her sinus cavity um, and it, it goes towards her ear and her jaw and her nose and her eye. They said it was rhabdomyosarcoma cancer. We finished treatment in January and we had about two weeks and then her body went into hemolysis and she just started breaking apart all of her red blood cells and getting rid of them. So um, she had gotten a lot of transfusions for the past three months leading up to that. Um, and then it just got to the point where she needed nonstop transfusions and she just wasn't holding any blood. Um, so we finally got past that. And as soon as we got past that, I think we had two more weeks and then she was in pain again. It's just a continuous process. It was like a break because her body was fighting itself. You know, I've, I've gone through a lot of this with family members in the past, but never children. Um, I think it impacts you a little bit. It takes you maybe a little bit to realize what has happened, but I think the immediate thing was just, okay, now we have a proper diagnosis of what's going on. How do we fix this? Is it fixable? What can we do? And then we just, you know, that's all we've been doing for the last year and a half now. I think the hardest thing has been giving everyone attention. Like we've been apart for so long and so often and it's hard to stay together as a family when you're in different places and then the kids see that we're always with Emmeline and they don't get much attention from us or get to do things with us. I know as an adult you've lived a lot of your life and you're like if I had to deal with this every single day I would be the most depressed person in the world. You have to realize that these kids, without a doubt, every single one of them, are ten times tougher than you are as an adult, without a doubt. <laughs>